and show me some oil pressure. Still nothing. All right, we're gonna get this thing over there and get this thing checked out. What's up everybody? Welcome back to Mohawk Motors. My name is Jason. So I've got a project today. Uh, hopefully it won't take too, too long. Uh, now that I've said that and jinxed myself, I'm sure it'll turn into a three day endeavor. But uh, let me show you what I'm working on here. So a few days ago, I picked up this 2000 Chevy Suburban um, and I bought it at auction online and it came as a, it was uh, listed in the auction as a running driving vehicle and I was able to jump start it and drive it off the trailer but then I noticed as I was checking everything out making sure the transmission was full uh, antifreeze all, you know checking all the fluids everything else letting it get up to operating temperature uh, I peeked in and there was no oil pressure and a few seconds after that the lifters started ticking now I checked the oil before I started it it's full of engine oil and it had oil pressure when I first started it when it was dead cold so I think the issue I have here is a common issue in the uh, these LS style truck engines and I'm gonna try to get it fixed so what I suspect and what I hope is the problem is these little guys right here now these are the there are two different styles of o-ring in this package and this is the o-ring for the oil pump pickup tube now, I don't know why but for some reason, the O-rings on these pickup tubes get dry rotted and cracked and shrink and they don't create a good seal between the pickup tube and the oil pump anymore. Once that happens, the pump starts to draw air instead of oil. Obviously, air will not lubricate the bearings in your engine. Now, there's also another common issue with these things that the, uh, the oil pressure will drop off and that is the oil pressure sensor in the engine. An easy way to tell the difference if it's the sensor or the pickup O-ring is if it's just the sensor, your oil pressure will drop off, but the sound of the engine won't change. If it is in fact your pickup tube O-rings, usually you'll have uh, intermittent oil pressure or oil pressure when it's cold and then it'll drop off as the engine warms up. But uh, a good way to know that it is in fact that O-ring is the lifters will start to make noise. Now, once you hear those lifters making noise, I really advise you to shut it down as quickly as you can because you are not getting enough oil pressure to lubricate your main bearings and rod bearings anymore. Uh, and once that happens, it's, it's not gonna be long until you've ruined that engine. So uh, we're gonna get this thing jacked up in the air and I'm gonna replace that oil pump O-ring. Okay, so we got the oil draining out of the engine. Now, I'm lucky this is a two-wheel drive truck, so there's no front differential. If you're working on a four-wheel drive truck, you're gonna need to pull the front differential out in order to get the oil pan down. Uh, since this is two-wheel drive, there's a cross member that runs across from here to over here. It's just held in place with some 18 millimeter bolts and nuts. Uh, there were skid plates, obviously the front air dam skid plate and then a skid plate underneath here. Those had to be removed. And then there's various little 10 millimeter bolts that hold things to the oil pan. There's a 10 millimeter that holds the little bracket here that holds your cooler lines and your wire harness. There's another 10 millimeter on the driver's side that holds your little front wrap, wrap around harness. Uh, and there's a 10 millimeter that goes through the side of this little dust cover here into the oil pan near the starter. So you need to get those undone. Then the two 15 millimeter bolts that go through the bell housing into the back of the oil pan. You'll need to get both of those out. <sighs> 
And then last but not least, disconnect your low oil level sensor. It's just a push lock connector, so you just un unconnect that. And once you have all that stuff out, then all you need to do is drain the oil like I am, and then take out all the 10 millimeter bolts around the perimeter of the oil pan. And you should be able to drop it down out of the vehicle that way. Okay, so I've got everything unhooked. I've got all the bolts out, but two from the oil pan. So I'm gonna take those last two bolts out and then lower the pan down. I've got my, my big drip tray here with the hopes of not having a huge oily mess in the driveway because oil is still gonna drip out from the crankcase of the engine. But hopefully I've drained you know, 90% of it out through the drain pan or drain plug. One, one more on this side. And if you're doing this, you know, try to leave it be two of the bolts that are easy to access. Go. The oil pan is loose. And the oil pan is out. Not bad at all. And that pan is pretty grody. This thing must have spent a lot of time sitting. Yeesh! Okay, so now all we need to do is get the pickup tube out. It's just held in place with, uh, if I remember correctly, two 13 millimeter nuts and then the 10 millimeter bolt that actually holds it into the oil pump. But, man, look how grimy this thing is, team. I've had some high mileage engines that look better than this. I mean, this thing is greasy inside. They either didn't change the oil or use the cheapest oil they could find. But uh, this 13 millimeter nut right here, this 13 millimeter nut right here, and then the little 10 millimeter bolt right there where the oil pump pickup tube attaches to the oil pump. You get those out of there and then the pickup tube will come off should come off, I should say. Get the 10 millimeter out of the way. There it is. Man, this engine is dirty inside. Whew. I know. I wonder if it's just the freaking screen and the pickup tube is clogged up with scale or flakes of whatever is in here. I have to clean it out really well while I have it off. Ta-da! All right, I'm gonna take this thing to the parts washer and get it scrubbed up. Oh, and I can see how choked up this pickup tube is. No wonder this thing can't get any oil. Let me see if I can get you close enough that you can see it. But this is inside the pickup tube. Look how gross that is. It's all clogged up with sludge and grime and who knows what else. You can see how filthy the pan is too. It's got scale on it. Who knows what I'm gonna find in the sump. So, I'm about 99% sure this is our problem. This is why it's important to change your oil on a regular basis 
and try to use decent quality oil, guys. What a mess, holy smokes. Let's get this stuff cleaned up. All right, team, I wanna show you this before I run out of daylight. I've got the pickup tube cleaned up and I've got the new O-ring so you can see for comparison. So here's the pickup tube. See in there? See how you can see that nice mesh? You can even see the outline of the tube. That's what it's supposed to look like. And if you change your oil and use a decent quality oil on a regular basis, it'll stay like that for as long as you run the engine and do the maintenance. So I have no doubt that was a, that was probably more the problem than the O-ring was. The O-ring still had enough tension on it when I pulled it out that I could feel it. So that sludged up, clogged up, disgusting pickup tube was our problem, I'm pretty sure. Now I'm still gonna replace the O-ring. This is the original O-ring. I think you can see it here. See how it's flat on the outside? It's just been in there for so long, it's lost all of its rubberiness. It's just, it's firm now. So it's not sealing as well as it can. This is the replacement O-ring. See, still nice, pliable, very soft. So it'll fill in that gap between the tube and the pump housing and make sure that we've got a good airtight seal. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get the oil pan cleaned out because I'm sure there's a bunch of nasty stuff laying in the bottom of that sump. And then I'm gonna try to spray and knock as much of that sludge off of the bottom of the engine as I can with like some brake clean and a brush. And, uh, and then I'm just gonna put it all back together and hopefully we'll have good oil pressure again. I'm, I'm pretty confident we'll have good oil pressure again. Whew. I'm not joking when I tell you this is the dirtiest engine I have ever seen in my life. There was, there was sludge in the bottom of the oil pan that thick. That's like a half inch. I had to scrape it out with a screwdriver to get the hard buildup off and out of the way. And then run the, run the parts washer to soften everything up. And then I was finally able to clean it out the rest of the way with the brush. It's still not a hundred percent spick and span perfect like brand new but it's clean enough that it's not going to have any more issues so you see that in there yeah there we go nice and clean again the rest of the pan is clean it's dark outside so i can't show you but i sprayed off the bottom of the engine as much as i could with brake clean hopefully that'll get that pretty cleaned up and uh we won't have any repeat problems. So now I just need to get it all put back together, new oil, new filter, and then start it up and see how much better our oil pressure is now. It couldn't possibly be any worse. All right, all right everybody, hopefully you can see me. Sun went down, obviously. I've got it all put back together, filled with oil, new filter, everything put back in place, so Let's start it up and see if we get some good oil pressure. Should take a couple seconds to pump up and fill the system again, and then we should be good. All right, here we go. Yeah! Boom! Look at that. Over 40 pounds of oil pressure, just like that. Just by having a pickup tube that isn't totally clogged and covered in sludge. Woohoo! Okay, I'm gonna let it run, come up to operating temperature. Uh, that should get all the lifters pumped all the way back up and good to go because they're probably completely collapsed from having no oil pressure in them. And then, uh, and then I'll bring you guys back to see our final result here. All right, everybody. Well, I've had it running for a while. Came up to operating temperature, and here we are. Just as smooth and quiet as you could hope for. Not to mention, look at that oil pressure. 
a little over 40 PSI at a hot idle. It's all you could ask for, right? So, I'm pumped. I'm glad it was an easy repair. Uh, I bought this truck with the intention of fixing it up and then selling it. So, I was a little alarmed when I saw no oil pressure. But, now that I've got that resolved, it's running great. And, uh, I mean, overall, it's in really nice shape. So, I think this will be a good flip for me. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I hope this helps you out. Uh, especially if you've got an older one of these uh, GMT 800 platform trucks. Like I said, that oil O-ring is a common problem. I really hope you never come across an engine as sludged up as this one is. But uh, if you do, now you know how to handle it. Thanks so much for watching, and until the next video, everybody, take care.